Let's create a nice pergola family with some details and an array of rips. An explodable one. Let's go. We will create a new generic model family. Here where we will build and collect our pergola parts together. Let's start by saving this family and give it a good name. The method is to create a separated family for each part of the pergola and load them all here. But first we will set some reference plans to control the main dimensions of the pergola. We will consider the center line's default reference plans to be the origin of the family, which means that it will be inserted later in the project file from its center point, that's why we are setting equality dimensions for the sides. Later we will see that this is not always what we have to do, because sometimes it is better to consider the origin of a family in the corner. It depends on how we intending to use and place this family and keep in mind that it is not so easy to change this decision later. We added parameters for the main width and main length of the pergola, it is optional to decide if it is type or instance parameter, I assume that you do know what does that mean and what is the difference between both, if not, let me know that in a comment, but here we decided to make it instance. Let's go for the next step. We will start a new generic model family. This one is for the pergola columns, so let's save it and start modeling. Usually, columns are just an extrusion with width, length and height, and that what we will do now. We will set reference plans to control column size. And start an extrusion of a rectangle. Make sure to lock each segment to its reference plan. Again let's create the parameters of the column size. The pergola column will be a rectangle, let's make it 150 by 150 millimeters. Did you notice that the origin of the column family is not the center? That's right. Here we will consider the column origin point at the corner, because it is very much easier when it comes to the placement of the column in the main pergola family, and we will examine this after a while. The column has a height, let's add another reference plan in the front view and give it a parameter. And then pull the column top to attach its height to the reference plan, we can either pull and lock, or use a line tool, both are okay, and both will be used in different situations. Let's load the column to the main pergola family and place it properly, and now we know why did we choose the origin at the corner, as the column will be aligned with the corner of the pergola, so it is logic to keep its corner fixed. A tricky point when it comes to aligning the column and any other family, take care to align the correct reference, because as you see sometimes it doesn't align, but it's stretching, just press tab key on the keyboard to choose the correct edge of the family, and be careful while doing this process. We always add controls to the families to mirror them by one click instead of using mirror tool, also to indicate the origin point easier. After placing aligning and locking the four columns of the pergola, and after each step of creating a parametric family, we have to test what we got, always go and change all the parameters values that we already created to make sure that all are working properly. Until now we didn't create the main height parameter of the pergola, and it's time to do so. Again, pull and lock, this time we are locking the columns families to attach the height of the pergola, there is another method to do the same function, but this is quite simple and it works fine until now. Sometimes, it is not the perfect way to adjust and lock the parameters of a family inside another family, and we will see the other method after a while, it is necessary in some situations. We created a top reference plan and gave it a name. The columns must not reach the top of the pergola, at least for this design, as there will be a topping shade which is loaded on top of these columns, so we need to keep the columns down below this shade. We will assume now that the shade thickness in 150 millimeters. Let's go create another part of the pergola. It is the top shade, another new generic model family, and another reference plans for the main width and main length, and again creating dimensions parameters, nothing new. For the top shade we will create an extrusion of a rectangle, and as we mentioned before, do not forget to lock all segments to reference plans, but here, the top shade is like a frame, 
so we need a void inside with another internal rectangle. We will use the offset tool, and let's assume that the frame width is 150 millimeters. Perform some tests to make sure that parameters are working properly so far. Let's add some reference plans and dimensions parameters to control the frame width. Then edit the extrusion, and use a line tool to lock the internal segments to the new reference plans. Let's change the frame width to 200, and back to 150, and 150 is fine. Now, adjust and control the height of the frame. Pull, and lock. Seems working perfectly. Save the shade family, and load it back into the main pergola. Let's locate and align its position, and the shade's origin is at the center, so we will align its references to the main center reference plans. And now, when we try to adjust the shade width and length to match the main family dimensions, we will find that the pull and lock method is not working. So, it's time to explore the another stable and strong method to do the same. As we already have these parameters for the shade family, all we need to do is to use them, we need to tell the shade family that its width and length are the same as the main family width and length. Press the small button beside the required shade parameter and assign it to the main pergola parameter which we need to be equaled with. If you feel confused about this step, just tell me, we can expand more about family parameters later. Some usual testing routine as we agreed before. Now, let's put the top shade in the correct location, on top. We can do so by various methods, one of them is to just move up and align with the required reference plan and lock it. Similar to the pull and lock method. Seems working fine. However, there is another method which may be better, we will open the top shade family and choose to be work plan based. Load it back into the main family and let's see what we've got. First let's reset what we did with the previous method, by unlocking and getting it down to the zero level where it was originally located. Now the top shade family can be assigned to a work plan. Remember when we gave a name to the top reference plane? That was the purpose. Check the height parameter and let's proceed. Earlier we locked the thickness of the top shade by 150 millimeters, but now we need the shade family to decide this value itself. So we will unlock the dimension and convert it to a parameter and link it with the top shade family's thickness parameter. Let's move on to the next element in the pergola. What about the top rips? Let's go. A new generic model family. And some reference planes. Add the dimensions parameters and create an extrusion. And don't forget to lock the extrusion segments to the reference planes as always. Adjust and control the thickness of the rip. As before, we will activate the work plan based option and load it to the main family. Let's choose the work plane to be the top level named reference plane in order to place the rip family to the top of the pergola and then align the rip center to the pergola center. Oh, now we need to be very careful, as there are overlapped center references here, so we need to align to the main family reference not the top shades one. Be precise. We won't use the pull and lock method to control and link the rip length with the pergola width. It won't work. We will do it with the right way. However, the rip length here doesn't equal the pergola width. But rips length equals pergola main width minus the top frame profile width multiplied by 2, right? So we need to link the rips length parameter to a new parameter we will create now and call it rips length and then apply this formula to it. The top shade profile width parameter still not imported to the main family, we need to import it to be a main family parameter in order to involve it to the required formula. Don't worry if you got confused again, after a while everything will be clear. Now we are ready to construct our formula and we have all the required parameters imported. The rip's length is now adjusted, and we can test this. Now we have only one rip, and we need an array of rips. Let's see how to do so. 
We need to set and control the start and the end of the array by these reference plans. Of course the array is laying inside the top frame. So we give these reference plans the same dimensions parameters of the frame profile width, which means that whenever the frame profile changed, the start of the array will move dynamically. Then add another reference plans for the spacing between the first rip and the start of the array. It is necessary as the first rip will not start directly from the frame, but of course there will be a starting void. For now we will assume the spacing value is 200 millimeters, but later we will assign a parameter for it to be dynamic also. The first rip will be aligned and locked with this reference plan. We align the rip center. Now, it's time for the exciting moment, the moment of the array. We go click on the array tool on the modify tab and choose to move to last, not second. Last, not second, and I'll tell you the difference between them after a while. Now we can change the array number, let's say four rips, and we need to align and lock the last rip with its reference plan, and that's why we chose the last option in the array tool, because we need the array to fill in the middle, not to be extended. In another words, when we choose last, the array will consider the second rip you put as the end of the array and any additional rips will be generated internally. Otherwise, if we chose second, then the array will add new rips to the left, and in our case these new rips will be outside the pergola. Okay, let's proceed. Now, regarding the array number, we will convert it to a parameter in order to control it when we load the family in the project. Logic. A quick test. 5 rips. 6 rips. Perfect. Momtaz. Let's convert the start spacing to parameters to get fully parametric pergola family. Oh, we forgot to save the rip family with a name, so we have to rename it here. What I did is not correct. Don't do like me please, you must either to save the nested family with a name before loading here, or to rename it immediately once you load it in order not to return with a mess. We will choose work plane based option. Okay, let's load into the project and enjoy what we've done so far. Okay, okay, okay. It's time to explode. Let's do it. To explode the family like this, we use what's so-called displace elements option from here. It doesn't work as expected? Yes. That is because the rivet is considering this family as one part or element. So it doesn't yet feel the parts of the pergola. Okay, what shall we do then? It's very simple, I'll tell you. It is all about updating and reloading all the family elements of the pergola to be shared families. Okay, and what is the shared family? Simply, it is a family which Rivet can feel it and act on it, than if it is included in another family. Rivet can feel the shared families and select them separately and even when it comes to the quantities, Rivet can count these nested families and include them in schedules. It is a very smart option. And that's why we do love Rivet, it is really brilliant. As you can see, now we can select each part of the pergola separately by pressing on tab key in the keyboard and apply the displace tool on it, then displace the selected part in Z direction to get the explosion presentable view we are looking for. Moreover, we can add pathlines guide to the original location of the displaced parts as shown and control the individual visual properties of each part as you wish to find the perfect and satisfying presentation. With some tests, we discovered that the rips are not properly locked to the height of the pergola, so we'll fix this easily. We will add section to see through the problem, and all we need to do is to lock the first rip top to the top level of the pergola, and do the same for the last one, only the first and last rips will control all the in-between rips. The problem is solved, and we have a beautiful and fully parametric pergola. Finally, imagine how much details you can add to enhance and develop you pergola family, or any other families of your own, based on what we've just accomplished. Use all the processes we've been through to create more and more. Don't ever stop, play, create, and enjoy. Enjoy the BIM by Rocks Engineering.